Hello everyone, this is Jarl Excel and welcome to another discussion video on Channel Duello. Well, today I'm not gonna feature any gameplay. Instead, we'll talk about the current state of Gwent, its balance problems and how to fix them. And we are going to focus on Skirtel today. If you're ever paying attention to the current meta, Gwent is not really in a great state right now. Uh, it's not well ba balanced to be honest with you and uh, looking at the factions you know just quickly northern realm seems to be the uh, most popular uh, faction right now and everyone is playing inspired seal leader and most of the players went back to playing their alumni uh, after trying uh, siege a bit and uh, i think the second popular uh, faction is uh, nilfgaard and Nilfgaard is basically playing the same double cross lists that we've been playing for six months or so. I mean, only a couple of cards are, you know, just different, but it's basically the same thing we've been playing. Uh, Syndicate is uh, playing King of Beggars since he came out. And, uh, but this season, something is a bit different in Syndicate. Uh, some people are uh, trying out off the books leader ability. Well, I guess it's good for change, but it's still the same list to be, I mean, 90% of the cards are common. I mean, uh, you can see all the cards in both lists. And uh, Skellige, I guess, is the best faction right now in terms of variety. Uh, and uh, now you can play Selpunt in addition to Onslaught, Battle Trance, Warrior and Rain lists. That's pretty good, I guess, and I wish every faction could be like that. And uh, the, the, the remaining two factions aren't doing well lately. Uh, monsters are basically abusing the Witch's Sabbath card and uh, almost in every leader, you know, uh, I mean, with relics, vampires, and, you know, <laughs> not Frost, I guess, but I mean, uh, most of the lists are using that card. And uh, to be honest with you, none of them feel strong. And uh, finally, Scoitel isn't in great shape either. And uh, that was the case last in the last season. The buffs to Etriel and Merlega and Greytalk were nice, but they just weren't uh, enough to put them to uh, above tier two, I mean, above even tier three. I mean, uh, this was also proven in last week's tournament. I mean, uh, I wanted to talk about that particularly. If you look, take a look at the list that uh, competitive plays brought to the tournament. Everyone is playing the same four factions and none of the players brought a monster list. I guess uh, only one player uh, was, was using a Skirtel list, but it was really different from what everyone is playing in the ladder. It was just, you know, uh, tech to, I guess, target uh, students, Northern Rams list. So basically, I mean, Nelfgaard Syndicate, Skellige and... Uh, well, Wait, what was it? Uh, Northern Rams, Nilfgaard Syndicate, and Skellige. Yeah, those are the four factions. Unfortunately, you know, <laughs> uh, Gwent uh, features six factions, and it is really uh, disappointing to see the other two factions not being represented in a high-level tournament. So it, looked like, it looks like Monsters and Skeletal need some love from CD Projekt Red design team. And uh, so far, for every balance patch, uh, CD Projekt Red's approach uh, was to focus on a single archetype and make them playable. They have actually somewhat done it. Uh, first, uh, I, I think we, uh, we can play vampires, they're not really that great, but it, they are playable. So they made that possible. And all of a sudden, you know, they fixed the onslaught leader ability and we can play pirates. And, uh, well, the latest, you know, uh, re revision to Siege Engines was really nice. Uh, I thought everyone was gonna play Siege, but I was uh, mistaken. Again, people are playing <laughs> students, alumni decks. And, uh, anyway, I'm expecting a similar treatment, uh, hopefully this patch and the next patch, and uh, I hope they will tackle Squirtle and Monsters in the following months. So, uh, while waiting for the new balance patch, uh, I'm going to focus on these two factions. Uh, today I will talk about Squirtel and in the next week I'm gonna shoot a video for monsters. What am I gonna talk about in these videos? Well, what can CDPR do to balance these factions and make them competitive again?
that's what I'm going to talk about. In this video, though, uh, I'll cover four topics and uh, check out the timeline for those. I mean, if you're not, if you do not want to listen to a particular part and skip to the, you know, skip to my suggestions or and so on, you can do that. I'm gonna uh, put those timestamps below. So, what am I gonna talk about first? Uh, I'm gonna talk about the current state of Squirtle. So, the best Squirtle cards in Gwent right now. Architects available uh, to be played in Squirtel faction, and uh, analysis of Squirtel leaders and their playability, and finally my uh, personal buff suggestions. I'm not a you know designer, but I have some experience uh, thanks to my age and uh, years years spent in playing uh, tradable card games, both physically and digitally. So uh, hopefully someone will listen and uh, you know. Uh, share the opinions with others and so on and uh, we love the game that's I, I mean you're watching it and that's why I'm shooting videos uh, for my YouTube channel so uh, I mean I don't want to you know harm any people and so on we're, we're just you know discussing uh, solutions alternative you know suggestions and so on but my uh, suggestions are divided into two categories some of them are radical uh, suggestions but uh, it is really difficult to do that because you know uh, I'm talking about an imaginative imaginative card or I mean I can't, I can't you know just imagine a design <laughs> so the ball is on uh, CD project red court uh, for that case but uh, I have some suggestions to individual you know cards like you know uh, buffing the provision cost or you know the power and so on so hopefully you like my suggestions and uh, let's move on without further ado let's talk about the current situation of Squirtle. Let's start with the strongest Squirtle cards in the game. Uh, the cards that you want to build your deck around them. You know, the, let's say must include cards. But I'm going to be focus on, focusing on, you know, high provision gold cards specifically. So what is the strongest Squirtle card right now in the game? I think uh, undoubtedly uh, Saskia Commander is the best card in the game right now. Uh, she is really an insanely powerful card. Uh, I mean, she can produce a lot of points, put a lot of units on the board and, you know, uh, create a long row that Squirtle really likes those because, you know, there are some cards that will benefit from them on uh, top of that you thin out your deck you know your lower provision bronzes come out of your deck and in the next round and if there will be a final round you know uh, you will always draw your colts so it is really a great card and uh, but the drawback of playing this card is uh, you have to build your deck around her you need to have at least 10 different primary categories in your starting deck. Well, Saskia Commander is a dragon, so it's basically nine primary categories plus Saskia, unless you're adding another dragon, but which you won't. So uh, that is the uh, drawback, as I said. So uh, you have to sacrifice some things to include Saskia Commander, but it's not that difficult. But uh, Saskia is, does not really go well with some uh, abilities and some leaders. And we're going to talk about them uh, in a bit. Uh, the second, I guess, most powerful Skirtel card in the game is uh, Gezra's. But we're not seeing him anymore, <laughs> any longer. Because uh, he has been power crept and to play Gezra's, uh, you need to play a long round you know uh, in the last two or three turns Gezra's will come into play and you know boost your units damage the units on the other side of the board not long ago this card was just insanely powerful but all of a sudden uh, they printed even more overpowered cards so <laughs> Gezra's I mean there is always an answer for Gezra's that's the problem with it and also the uh, I would say ma uh, macro strategy of Squirtle decks uh, do not really fit a uh, strategy for Gezra's. You know, you usually want to bleed, and uh, especially when you add Gezra's to your deck, you know, you gotta have a long round. And you also want to play your Saskia, and Saskia is typically around one card. 
because you want to thin out your bronzes and in that round if you play your Gezras, yeah, you will run out of ammunition that's the problem with it and uh, that's why we're not seeing him any longer yeah I mean the opponents can answer Gezras really well but I don't think he fits really great right now uh, with Saskia or if you just want to play Saskia and just play Gezras but you know that deck has is really outdated nothing has been added to it while the other factions got stronger so that's why Gezras is right now a uh, backup card yeah, so it would be really crazy to buff him I guess he's already too strong but uh, it is not his time <laughs> and uh, what about other cards well, I mean, uh, to play Gezras, you, again, you need to build your deck around him. And uh, other cards, uh, you don't need to build your deck around him, but Simlas is, has become kind of an auto-include card. And because uh, there is Bountiful Harvest card uh, along with this. When you play Simlas, you can play uh, double Bountiful Harvest. You put two elves on the board, you boost uh, units in your hand it's just a uh, too powerful play so when you include uh, Simlas you have to add two bountiful harvests an alternative approach is to uh, you know add orbs and play Alzur so that's the second usage of Simlas and uh, well you have to play him because uh, the gland has become re really uh, insane <laughs> people can put a lot of points all of a sudden with with one single interaction so you gotta answer to that and Squirtle's only answer to that is Simlas because all of the other cards need some time to build up but with Simlas uh, you can play a huge uh, you know uh, points of num points on the board that's a really power play so you gotta include him and uh, when you include Simlas and Bountiful Harvest you kinda want to keep playing spells and uh well, uh, you usually go and play Gord at the end because you're going to be playing a lot of spells and so on. So, I mean, Simlas is an auto-inclusion card, but when you include him, you kind of decide uh, where to go with him. So he kind of forces you to play a lot of spells. But, uh, you know, you can go ahead and uh, do not add any other spells other than Bountiful Harvest, and uh, I think you'll be fine, especially if your hand is... If your list is geared towards hand buff, another auto include card is Force Protector. No, I mean there are a few decks that don't play uh, this guy, but I mean uh, especially, I mean before Bountiful Harvest, this card was already uh, pretty good and uh, it kind of replaced uh, the Great Oak. And uh, well, a uh, combination with Nature's Rebuke, this card is really good. But now there is an alternative and. Uh, equally good interaction which is a uh, force protector into bountiful arrows because it's a nature card uh, surprisingly it's a bronze card so again i mean you got to play these two cards somehow and as you see all of a sudden you are kind of you know forced to play these goals and you you don't have any other things to add after playing these and you gotta add some consistency cards to draw these cards because you know they uh, immensely change the outcome of the game but uh, there are some alternatives like you can always uh, decide to play Aethne but Aethne is usually uh, helpful in uh, symbiosis decks because the third form of Aethne has symbiosis but if you're playing a you know, unit heavy deck and you want to form a long row Ethne is really helpful with that again because she puts three bodies on the board so she, uh, she has some uh, short round potential because of that and she also has long round potential if you're gonna play uh, nature cards after playing her that's why again uh, she's a top tier card and another you know uh, like maybe one of the best Skotel cards is the Great Oak and they buffed him now uh, he's I mean, he used to be the best critical card in the game and they nerfed him and but now i think he is back to his original state if i'm not mistaken but still it's not enough i mean we can't really uh, add him to the uh, squirtle list i mean what am i gonna replace for example in this nature's gift list 
I mean, you can't remove Forest Protector, you can't remove Aethne, you can't remove Simless, you can't remove Saskia. I mean, if you decide not to play Saskia, then uh, you're losing a lot of points and uh, it's not going to be enough for you. So, Great Oak is uh, really great and actually used to be great in Harmony decks and uh, now we can't play Harmony decks and I'm going to talk about that uh, again. And uh, yeah, these are the most uh, powerful Skoetel cards and you gotta make some sacrifices and right now Great Oak and uh, Gezra's are being sacrificed, so Saskia, Simla's Force Protector and uh, Aethne, we see these cards more uh, often than the others. And uh, let's talk about the archetypes now. I mean, uh, what types of decks can you play with Skoetel? Well, since I have a Nature's Gift list, uh, open in my deck builder. Let's talk about that first. For about maybe the last one year or maybe even more, uh, Symbiosis was the most popular you know, leader. And with Symbiosis you gotta play Spell Squirtle or Spell Squirt Spell. I, I can't do that but I'm just gonna say Spell Squirtle. So uh, you gotta play you know your nature cards and uh, they will trigger your you know Symbiosis and then uh, your Gort will be your finisher. But Gort uh, received a nerf not long ago, and uh, he can't be that big anymore. And uh, most of the games that I played in the, re in the recent months, Gort was just too short. I mean, uh, you kinda want to play a three or four card, uh, four card short round, and uh, Gort, you know, just cannot compete with Savolas and so on. But, uh, I mean, they did the right thing by uh, nerfing Gort. Uh, it was kind of ridiculous for a 7 provision card to be a, a finisher in your win condition. But I think they should have, you know, added another card to compensate the uh, point that we lose with Gort. I mean, the, the current uh, state of Gort is perfect, don't touch him. But you know, you know, just try to add some stuff to this uh, symbiosis list because you can't produce uh, many numbers. Well, this is not, a, by the way, a standard list or something like that because no one is playing symbiosis. This was just a list after Etriel and Merliga received some buff. Well, you can play differently. This one is playing Saskia and symbiosis. Well, it is possible to do, you know, different combinations, obviously. Anyhow, so Symbiosis is an okay list, but uh, uh, he, it just falls short. Can't compete with top tier decks. Uh, what is our second archetype that we can play? Well, Elves is an option. Well, you're probably gonna laugh, but you know, Elves used to be good. I mean, uh, you always had the option to play them, but right now they are just unplayable, you know. Uh, there isn't enough points in this deck. Well, if you're gonna play Elves, so let's talk about that. You gotta play Scenario Feign Death, obviously, and then uh, Elves form payoff cards like, you know, uh, Isengrim is the best option here. And then uh, Yaven is pretty good. This guy used to be the number of Elves, by the way, uh, like uh, one and a half year ago, but uh, he is, by, I mean, you damage an enemy by the number of elves units in this row so you gotta uh, put all the elves in the same row I don't know maybe they should go back to its uh, previous state because meta has <laughs> changed a lot the power creep I don't know and uh, again another great elf card is Varnasil especially after you play you know Feign death, and if you're using Dead Eye Ambush Leader, you know, there will be a lot of Dead Eyes, and the Vernasil will come into play and sh uh, shoot everyone with the uh, arrows, I guess. <laughs> so, those are pretty good guys, and you also have the Thinning card with Aileron and so on. Uh, I really li like this deck, it's solid, but it needs some buffs or you know, some new elf payoff cards. Again, uh, it is not just enough. Not, not enough points. The third archetype is Dwarves. Well, we have the Mahakam Forge leader for that. And uh, there is an ultimate, you know, Dwarf payoff card, which is Brewer Hook. Uh, if Brewer uh, isn't answered by the opponent, you probably win the round. 
uh, he is that powerful but uh, you don't have a second <laughs> option that's the problem with it yeah there are some you know good interactions with this deck but it's not just enough and uh, even you know suppose uh, they buffed a lot of dwarves and so on uh, and suppose the dwarves has become the you know the best list in the game well there is always uh, Geralt Yirden you can always respond to that with Yirden and all of a sudden everything is gone so you can't just rely on you know boosting the dwarves on the same row you gotta have some different tactics they are trying to you know uh, buff the cards little by little with you know small buffs and so on but uh, it's far from being competitive in my opinion the latest buff dwarven agitator is pretty good uh, instead of hand buff it makes more sense to give armor to dwarves in your hand and uh, you know the dwarf berserkers are pretty good engines they damage and so on uh, this tech needs some cards like uh, Yarp and Zygrin you need some dwarves cards that you uh, play and damage enemy units just like this I mean Skellige is doing that pretty good and uh, Skoetel is also suitable you know there are some elf cards like, but, like that but they're not enough dwarf cards I mean uh, I don't want every dwarf to boost themselves you know let's just interact with the opponent ports and this tech does not interact uh, at all I mean it's like playing solitaire it's not uh, fun to be honest with you we need some you know interaction with the opponent uh, side of the board which will even make the games more competitive so I hope you know uh, we get new dwarf designs but uh, the, the dwarves we have are just enough to cut it but still this is an option so you can uh, always go with dwarf and elf root but <laughs> as you see neither of them are just particularly powerful and then uh well harmony is an option what happened to harmony well power crap power creep has happened you can't play call of harmony any longer uh, it's too slow yeah uh, you gotta play a slow round i mean long round and you know the harmony cards will boost themselves by one by one by one and yeah uh, it's not uh, you know <laughs> strong uh, first of all there is not enough you know harmony cards in the game and cards like dried ranger and you know the poison package is just too slow when you compare it to you know nilf card and syndicate you just cannot play these and hope to win the game and uh, this, this this deck was used to be the best deck in the game like two years ago and they even nerfed some of the cards and the nerfs still uh, stay the same <laughs> but you know all of the other cards you know just went nuts so it's no longer uh, viable to play this harmony deck it, it is sad because it's one of the most fun decks to play with and if you're playing against you know uh, call, uh, harmony it is fun as well so it's not a cancer deck or anything uh, Gwent is supposed to be played like this and unfortunately we can't play this uh, I have a small uh, suggestion for that, so keep watching this video. Uh, what about other archetypes? Well, uh, there is no unit, which I'm not a fan of. Option. You can uh, play Precision Strike and then add a bunch of control cards like uh, Heat Wave, Vigos Muzzle, I guess, the Bombs, Sabertooth Tiger, and uh, as you see, I mean, the Broklon Sentinels. Uh, most of these units are not actually units so i forgot about that i forgot to add uh, the dragon so there's that you know immunity dragon as well you can you know uh, put up a list like this but if you're playing on blue coin you're probably going to lose the game uh, it's a very polarized list uh, it only wins on uh, you know red uh, red coin so that's the problem with this list other than that you know playing against it is really frustrating for the opponent and not healthy for the game uh, what else do we have well you can go ahead and play Alzur decks like this you know guerrilla tactics deck uh, well uh, Simlas, Orb of Insight you know Elvin Seer and then Alzur I mean this is a pretty good combo uh, again power creeped has happened here as well not enough but you know if if you're skilled enough and opponent didn't draw well 
you can win some games with it. But this is not the Squirtle that we want. I mean, Alzor is a neutral card and... Uh, well, winning the game usually depends on uh, the random, you know, units that are spawned on the uh, board. So, again, it's not good for the health of the game. Uh, I mean, I have been playing with Alzor, but I'm just not happy playing him. And uh, when he was first released, I hated the card. And I still don't like it. So, I mean, Alzor is an option, obviously. And then... Uh, what do we have left? Well, hand buff, maybe. Like this one. Hand buff is an awkward game mechanic. I mean, uh, there's not enough uh, payoff cards for hand buff. We have Sheldon. And uh, we have Flavandril, which uh, he isn't in this list uh, that I'm playing, or, you know, this is a, again. Uh, at least in theory, I didn't play with it. Well, you gotta uh, make sure that they are in your hand so that they receive hand boost. And uh, the only card that you can do it with, with is playing Curse Scroll as stratagem. You know, you, if you're missing your Sheldon Skeks, you can draw it with uh, that and you keep it in your hand. But that's a huge tempo loss. So you probably uh, are gonna uh, lose an even if you wanna do that. And, uh, well, Torque is nice. You are guaranteed to, you know, draw him. He starts in your hand, but he doesn't start in, at the left side of the hand. Why did I say that? Because with Bountiful Harvest, you kind of want to uh, give the boost to him when you play Harvest. And uh, right now, it isn't easy to do that because some of the options for Bountiful Harvest are just crap. And, uh, well, if, to play Torque, you need to play Devotion. That's also a drawback. And you can't play Heat Wave and other cards. And then, uh, do we have another uh, payoff card? We don't. I mean, we have some hand buffers like, you know, Danka and, you know, Hawker Smuggler and so on. But the problem with this deck is it's really easy to defend against this deck. Because, you know, uh, you use your leader. The opponent knows that the boosted units are in your hand. So they will uh, try to you know, win first round and then bleed you in the second round to death. Even if they lose their card advantage, that's fine. So you'll end up playing a, uh, let's say, 17 power, uh, you know, torque and lose all the leader points and you're, you're not going to have anything left for the final round. So uh, if, the, if the opponent is skilled enough, I mean, they will just win every game against you. Maybe, you know, in some certain situations, you can abuse the red coin and win some games. But that's the nature of this leader ability. So, in my opinion, hand boost is just a side mechanic. You just cannot build your deck around it. Uh, unless, you know, some other, you know, uh, payoff cards for hand buff are printed. But I doubt that. And finally, you can play some movement engines. You know, you have uh, Guerrilla Ambush, uh, Guerrilla Tactics, sorry. Uh, mix it up with uh, magic gathering. Well, uh, they printed Milva, and uh, since, I mean, until she received a nerf, uh, she dominated the meta. She was really great. But uh, instead of nerfing the Guerrilla Tactics leader, they should have, you know, cut the provisions because there is a super strong card that is you know, that really interacts well with the leader. Instead, they just killed Milva. And uh, after that, now we're seeing the not so fun to play against uh, alumni decks so Milva you know, kind of kept the meta in check it was really difficult to play engines now it's more easier to do that uh, I wish they didn't touch Milva and you know just uh, adjusted the guerrilla tactics so with Milva you can either play control actually I mean control heavy or you can play your engines so it is still possible to play movement engines with guerrilla tactics either you move your own units and you know they I mean your units are already moving since you're gonna uh, add some movement units and you know some of them already receive buffs like dried matrons are not five provision anymore so uh, that is also an option so you gotta play gazras and so on but uh, well maybe you can add saskia but movement is movement again it, it cannot compete with nilf card or uh, syndicate so that's the bad thing about it 
So I guess I, I covered all the archetypes. Now let's move to the leader abilities. But this is gonna be... Uh, let's just take, check it out from here. Shorter than discussing the archetypes because they are kind of connected. Well, uh, we have what? 5-7 uh, leader. Guerrilla tactics is just, you know... Uh, you can use it for control purposes, but if you do that, you know, it's just a six point leader. It's not much. And uh, with Milva, yeah, there is, I mean, you can get more points, but uh, I just talked about it. Uh, Milva isn't the Milva that <laughs> was printed, so she's not that good any longer. So that's why if anyone is playing Guerrilla Tactics, they're just playing it for the 16, uh, you know, bonus provisions. Because the leader do, do not uh, bring anything great to the table. Invigorate is again weird. Uh, I think the current situation of uh, Invigorate is pretty good. Now we have three charges. At least you know we can divide the points. I mean, uh, two two uh, buffs uh, previously. It was horrible. You know, just using the using one charge and boost everything. That was terrible. Hopefully they fixed it. I'm not sure uh, they want to do anything more. Uh, if you want to dedicate your deck to hand buff, good luck with that. Maybe uh, Invigorate Leader should be played as a you know support leader to you know uh, to keep your engine safe. You can you know maybe use it, but uh, if you do that, it's gonna what play for twelve actually. So twelve point uh, leader isn't bad to be honest with you. So uh, I think it's, it's fine right now. They don't need to further buff it. Nature gives is uh, pretty balanced in my opinion. Uh, the number of chargers and you know vitality makes sense. Passive symbiosis is pretty good, so no need to uh, buff or nerf it. Precision strike. Well, that's the leader I have problem with right now. Uh, with precision strike, you obviously need to add two Brocklone Sentinels and you know mulligan them during your mulligan phase, and uh, they're gonna come out of your deck. And uh, it is a pretty good option. It is a very pretty good control option. I uh, precision strike used to be one of my favorite leaders. That's the reason. I mean, you can uh, play your Brooklyn Sentinels. All of a sudden, you produce a long row, and then you can play your uh, cards that like uh, having a long row, like Great Oak and so on. But you cannot do that anymore because uh, you can't play your Brooklyn Sentinels when you're playing uh, Saskia Commander because they have deployability and you don't want them to come out of your deck at all <laughs> so, so the, they are you know, linked to your leader so since you can't play uh, Saskia commander with precision strike well all of a sudden it's a pretty bad leader and it's 14 provision it's really low they need to you know increase the provision cost here uh, they nerfed this leader a couple of times but now the meta has changed. I think they gotta take back the nurse. 14 is too low. Well, uh, increasing it to 16, will that help? I'm not sure anyone, uh, to be honest with you, because you're not gonna be able to play your Saskia. Or you just don't add Broccoli on Sentinel and still play Saskia Commander. But if you're not gonna, you know, uh, benefit from the leader, why play Precision Strike then? You know, go with Invigorate or something like that. <laughs> So the, this is a problematic leader right now, and, and the only reason is Saskia Commander. Saskia Commander is just too strong to pass. That I ambush. Well, with that I ambush, you gotta play elves or traps or in combination. Traps is just cancers, you know. Uh, thing I wish it, they didn't exist at all. So I'm not gonna talk about that much because I have talked about that. Uh, in my previous discussion videos well you gotta play elves with that i ambush and uh, they're not just strong enough no need to talk for more about that call of harmony well call of harmony's leader ability is supposed to be played with harmony uh, when they changed this leader uh, nobody played it and nobody's playing it because the leader isn't just you know impressive enough you know you just uh, produce a token and the object is you know uh, since it's a relic uh, she's gonna trigger all of your harmony cards on the board and so on but it's not that powerful 
yeah, and you can do something different like you can start with this and order protocol and then play your you know uh, harmony cars again it's not that impressive and well it's 16 provision bonus i don't know i mean increasing the power that's not gonna cut it anyway i don't like this leader at all and uh, i'm gonna suggest a radical you know change here uh, i mean i'm not sure if it's the right thing to do but uh, what i'm gonna suggest here why not add a passive ability like uh, you know jackpot or symbiosis like you know why not or maybe Markham forge you know if you remember it all the wars in your starting deck get one armor what about you know all harmony cards in your deck get like one additional point like the king brand you know the veteran cards have one more power maybe that could you know <laughs> put more points on the board if you do that so then it becomes a strictly you know harmony leader will that make harmony playable i'm not sure it's just a suggestion and uh, unfortunately i just cannot change anything in the game and uh, hopefully they come up with something because i really want to play harmony and uh, i'm pretty sure a lot of people agree with me and finally mahakam forge is for dwarves strictly i think it's a fine leader no need to change it they just need to print better dwarves so that's it for the uh, archetypes and leaders now uh, i'm gonna suggest some, some buffs okay i already talked about a buff suggestion which is the uh, passive ability to you know call of harmony my second uh, somewhat radical you know change is actually it, uh, it's a card needs to be changed uh, entirely and uh, we need more thinning cards for skirta uh, if you look at it well we have uh, thinning for dwarves but we don't have thinning for elves well there is uh, obviously aileron that comes out of your deck but uh, i don't i'm not talking about that kind of thinning you know compared to syndicate you have two thinning cards you know sewer raiders and uh, you know casino bouncers especially for casino bouncers there's no condition for that you know when you draw one of them you just you know play its insanity fee and uh, the other comes into play and for sewer raiders you just need uh, what four coins so <laughs> i mean you put like eight points on the board and you thin two of your cards from your deck and Nilfgaard has plenty of thinning available so syndicate needs some consistency i mean only dwarves have it uh, with you know, novic riding gestures and put those you know two dwarves on the board and uh, i think a card like siege master is needed for Skoetel. siege master is pr a pretty good card and uh it really helped uh, northern realms and uh you can play devotion and get away with it you know you don't have to play on your because those siege masters come into play with you know siege engines why not print a card like uh, like similar to that because it could be like when you play an elf you know uh, two powered uh, cards come into play as well i think square needs a card like that and uh I'm, th I'm thinking about thinning and well there's bountiful harvest but i i can't you know just put that in the thinning category because you know you gotta add two six <laughs> provision bronze cards in order to play it and also simless so uh, i mean we need two five provision thinning cards uh, for else that's uh, i think that's necessary other than that i mean uh, CD Projekt Red can get creative and change the, a card entirely and uh, maybe they'll do that but I mean I, I'm not working for them so I don't know what's going on behind the closed doors so we'll see so I cannot again I mean make suggestions like that but I can make some suggestions to individual cards you know some uh, little uh, buffs to you know cards that we're not using anymore like uh, for example i mean uh, we can increase provision of some cards like you know for example vernacil i mean uh, vernacil was a pretty good card but we can't see her any longer because i mean <laughs> huge power creep 
uh, I mean, you play Vernacio, she adds uh, two dead eyes on the boards. But for 12th provision, 12th provision, with 12th provision, when you compare to, you know, other gold cards in other factions, uh, they do much more than uh, Vernacio. So either change Vernacio or uh, decrease provision goes to 11 or 10. I mean, the same could go for, you know, Water of Broccolon. Why is it 12th provision? you can i mean it can easily be 11. uh the regular saskia card they already buffed her but it's not enough my was playing her maybe i mean again you can decrease the provision for that elias and uh again we're not seeing this card any longer uh he is really good in symbiosis deck because you can eat your you know the trion tokens but uh he's nine provisions i mean you can Play him for eight provisions and no one will, you know, uh, complain, <laughs> I guess. I mean, with uh, think about uh, Nilfgaard. You play your Blightmaker, Mage Assassin combo, and you put a hell uh, much more points with six provision. So this guy is nine provision, so why not make him eight provision? Hawker Smuggler. I mean, why is this six provision? I mean, <laughs> he should be five provision. I mean, six is too much. Circle of life. I mean, uh, this card should be four provisions. Why is it five provisions? Uh, similar to Waylay, I think they should decrease its casting uh, cost. Uh, it's not Magic the Gathering, sorry, the provision cost. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't think anyone's going to complain about the you know provision uh, cuts from these cards. But if they do all of them together, that will be a problem. So I'm just su su suggesting, you know, they could you know pick a couple of them and yeah, yeah, apply. And Brehan. Brehan isn't being used at all. Uh, so with Guerrilla Tactics, uh, this card should be an auto-inclusion. But when Guerrilla Tactics was popular with, you know, Milvadex, people didn't play him any <laughs> anyway. So I think this card sucks. Maybe they should increase his power or maybe decrease his adrenaline cost or something like that. But I mean, uh, we should be able to use this card. Uh, it's a shame that we're not using him. And uh, let's be more s specific and you know, I'm just gonna show the cards. Not Milva, but uh, Milan. People uh, probably forgot this card exists. Uh, this is one of the starter, you know, uh, deck cards. For nine provision, Milian is for f uh, eight points, you know, for herself and for damage. So nine provision for eight points is just, I don't know, I mean, why isn't anyone bringing this up? This card is, you know, should be maybe seven provisions, you know, seven for eight is pretty nice. Yeah, I know, I mean, damaging an enemy by four is a big, big deal. But in this meta, I, I don't think it's going to be that powerful. You know, you could definitely, I mean, they already did that, to, you know, Atrial Moralega, you know, decrease the provision from eight to six. So why not do this for Milan as well? You know, just make her seven provisions. Yeah, there is this ranged ability, damage four enemy units by one. That's not that much. Well, I mean, maybe you can decrease her power to three and uh, uh, decrease the provision to seven. I think that would be fair. So I want to use this card. So we need some cards like this. And there is there are two engines that I really loved them, loved using them, and they were prevalent. Uh, Pauco Gale is one of them, and the other is Triant Boar. Again, they fall out of favor. We, we, we can't see these two cards anymore because they are easily, you know, uh, answered. Their power is five. So uh, opponent can kill it with a nature's rebuke, Azur's thunder. And uh, maybe they should add an armor or maybe veil so that people can't lock, lock them. And uh, a protection would be really nice to do those two cards. Uh, again, I want to play these two as well, but I think they should, they would work in a harmony deck. So if they're gonna, you know, buff harmony, yeah, they can go ahead and uh, buff them as well. 
but maybe if they you know buff army maybe they don't need to buff these two cards because they have different tags one of them is a triant the other is human so that those are rare tags and squirtel so i mean let's bring them back to the game and speaking about harmony and some dryads need love like why is this card five provision and why is uh, a card that's dealing poison that's giving poison damage and immune by two this card should be four provisions you know deploy poison and enemy enemy units so that's it you know similar to tra uh, trafficker yeah i know there there's harmony on top of that uh, i think this is reasonable there's no reason that this card is still you know five provision i think they should uh, make her powerful again and another dryad that I want the uh, provision brought back to four is Force Whisper. So, I mean, if we're gonna play this uh, Dry Ranger card, we should also play Force Whisper with her. So, both of them could be for provision, and no one would complain. Another, you know, Dry Digestion is Brienne. If you can, I mean, uh, this card sucks. They should just, you know, rework this. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe similar to what they did with the self wound card, Knut. You know, this this has three charges. Maybe, maybe she could be turned into an engine similar to Pauko. Again, something, you know, related with the Dryads. Although we have Triant Boar for that, but, you know, uh, similar to those cards. Uh, its current, you know, uh, version is just not uh, good enough. And what about this Dryad? Dryad Grove Keeper is just terrible. Give an allied unit vitality with attrition equal to the number of other allied Dryad units. So we don't have a Dryad, you know, uh, tribal deck. So what do you want to achieve with this? I would just play this Enchantress. She is also for provision and automatically, you know, gives ranged vitality 3 or if you want, you can give 3 armor. No one would play this card, so again, this card needs rework. Totally trash right now. And uh, I guess that's it with the Dryads. The other cards are uh, pretty good. And then, uh, what else? Yeah, oh, okay, I forgot about this card. The Fledgling, since we're talking about Harmony cards. Well, 4-4 uh, poor Harmony is pretty bad, so ev everyone was playing them with water of broccolon as a spawn card maybe they could you know add an armor to her so that uh, she doesn't die to a four damage spell or I, I don't know i mean increasing the power to five don't make much sense so maybe adding armor could be an option so that's it i guess uh, I'm taking a look at the notes that I took today and uh, I guess that's it for me. I probably, you know, forgot about to talk about some cards. So please make sure to add them in the comments below. I really want to hear your opinions. And uh, those are those were my suggestions. So looking forward to hear your suggestions. Uh, Squirtle definitely needs some love and, you know, we need a more balanced meta. We need to see Squirtle and monsters. So uh, also... If you like this video, uh, check out my channel next week. I'm going to do a similar one for monsters. So hopefully you like this one and you'll like the next one. Okay, so that's it for me and hope to see you on another Duelo video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget to do so. And uh, hope to see you guys again. Bye bye.